Hi, my name is Nat, amateur radio call sign W8NAT, and today I'm going to show you my latest antenna trial, which is a linear loaded multiband doublet that includes the 80 meter band. I've been interested in trying a doublet for a multiband antenna, but I haven't bothered because I have 40 meters and up already, and to make a doublet long enough to include 80 meter would be just too big for my backyard, or as the Brits call it, garden. For those of you who don't know what a doublet is, there are better sources than I to explain it, but it's basically a non-resonant dipole, equal lengths on a side, fed with balanced line like twin lead, letter line, window line, etc., rather than coax. It requires an external tuner, because even when resonant, the impedance won't match 50 ohms due to the balanced feeder being high impedance, and the SWRs can be higher than an internal tuner can handle. But the plus side is that balanced feeder has so little loss in high SWR conditions that the antenna tuner can actually do its job and send any reflected single out to the antenna to be radiated, whereas with coax a lot of that is lost. Anyway, you want to double it to be close to half a wave on the lowest band you want to use, and half a wave on 80 meters is bigger than my yard, which this is not a picture of. But I saw some projects with linear loading a doublet that's shortening the full-size doublet by doubling back the wire at the ends. A common method is to use window line, with the far ends twisting the two wires together to make one long wire. Even that came out long for my yard, of which this is not a picture, until I discovered the concept of the Cobra, which has two double backs, making each leg an S-shape. The project I found was about 20 feet of length per leg, each containing about 60 feet length of wire. This sounded both intriguing and promising. To construct this, I used 450 ohm solid wire window line I got from Gigaparts. Uh, first, I cut the lengths about 21 feet to have an extra foot to play with for connecting to the centerpiece. Exact measurement's not critical since the antenna's not resonant, but you do want both sides to match each other. At the far end, I twisted the ends together so that any signal would double back up the second wire of the window line. For the third bend, I took a 20-foot length of window line and split it like this, so that I had two wires with spacers I could use to add it at the right distance, and I used several spots of electrical tape to attach this to the other two. After attaching the third line to each side, I twisted to the middle wire, giving me the S-shaped path. I then attached these to this centerpiece made by MFJ because I'm too lazy to make my own. Without climbing on my roof, the highest I can get this is about 20 feet up and some trees at each end, but that'll do for now. The window line from the center then comes down to a 4 to 1 ballon made by LDG because I am lazy. Since my auto-tuner takes coax only, I'm using this to get the impedance closer to 50 ohms and suitable for a short coax run through the window to the tuner. The biggest variable was whether or not my trusty old Z100 Plus auto-tuner could handle this. I've seen it bring in some crazy matches, so I opted to go for it, and then if it didn't work, I would spring for a manual tuner I've been eyeballing. I'll spare you watching the testing, but it turns out it could tune in this antenna on all the bands. but it would disengage on 80 and 30 meter bands if I ran more than 10 watts. Since I want to use more than 10 watts on 80 meter, I did go ahead and order the manual tuner I want, but in the meantime, we can still test those bands at low power. One thing that can be very frustrating to me in videos is when ham radio operators try out a new antenna and then use Whisper to test it. Whisper is for testing propagation, not antenna performance. Whisper is also crazy magic that can detect horrible signals and give you no real-world idea of how well your antenna works. So while it may give you an idea of what direction your antenna works best in, the results will look way more promising than is realistic in day-to-day -day use. Therefore, it's irresponsible to use Whisper to demonstrate an antenna's efficacy. So anyway, here's how this antenna did on Whisper. The 10 and 12 meter band were no results, just like my other antennas lately. We just need to get an opening here. Uh, at 11 in the morning, 15 meter shot way out to the east, hitting nothing but DX in Western Europe, and at 4 p.m. it shot out widely to the west, including Hawaii. 17 meter hopped out to much of North America, minus the close-in stuff, and some Europe. Nice. 
20 meter is getting out around North America plus Europe, including Scandinavia, and a couple spots in New Zealand. Yeah, I'll take that. 40 meter was pretty much blanketing the US and some of Canada, which is not bad for 20 feet in the air. 30 meter was pretty much like 40 meter, plus Europe and Hawaii. 80 meter did okay in the afternoon and looked promising for NVIS work. My 80 meter goal is to be able to talk on some regional nets in the evenings once I can run more power. So I would be happy with the old Northwest Territory. But testing again at 9 p.m. reached out further than expected, well outside NVIS range. I mean, I'm pretty sure Alberta is outside NVIS range for Michigan. So I'm excited about these prospects. Whisper aside, how about the practical world? Well, the first thing I noticed was on the receive side. This antenna is 10 feet lower than my end fed, and I get better signals in a lot of situations. But the biggie on the receive side is that it's a much quieter antenna. Here's 40 on my radio scope, complete with background noise, and here with the doublet. On more than one occasion, this has made an audible difference that made a sideband contact more readable. Where this really shines is when doing chatty digital modes. Here's me looking at an Olivia signal in FL Digi. See it? I mean, here's some PSK, and here's some FT8, but I can't see the Olivia, and it's not even decoding. Switching to the doublet, now it's starting to show up, and it looks even stronger when the PSK signal goes away. That's some automatic level control shenanigans right there. Pro tip, if I tell my radio's filter to be the same width as the Olivia signal, wipes out all the other signals that could affect my ALC. And oh yeah, baby, I could do this all night. So anyway, I've made several decent contacts on the doublet, so that makes me happy. This thing is only 20 feet off the ground and a compromise at only physically 40 feet long, and I'm happy enough with it that I plan to use it as my main antenna for a while. That doesn't mean I won't be switching to the end fed when needed, but that's still saying a lot. And I'm happy enough with it that the only change I'm considering is working out how to get this thing higher than 20 feet in the spring. I'm also happy enough with it that I'm finally springing for the VersaTuner 2, complete with built-in meters, ballon, antenna switch, and dummy load, which MFJ will happily ship precisely when they feel like it. And I'm happy enough with it that I'm making a video about it. Once I have the manual tuner, I'll be trying some 80 meter activity with higher power and let you know how that goes. In the meantime, if you can stand to work with balanced line and a tuner, I highly recommend trying making a doublet. And if you think you don't have the space, I still recommend trying a linear loaded doublet, like the, the Cobra. Cobra. Anyway, that's the video. Thanks for hanging out. Remember, if you subscribe and hit the bell, you will likely be disappointed at how rarely I make videos. But you will know when I do.